So, yo, it's your boy eBay fight predictions in the building. Yeah, we have no fights this week. Uh, actually, we do have uh, Bellator on Saturday, so we're going to see Ryan Bader versus Modolski. Uh, Deron Caldwell is on their card, so that's pretty good. I, I might do a breakdown for the Bader fight. Uh, but yeah, uh, I kind of wanted to do a video. Everyone laughs at me. Everyone's talking shit to me when I say this. My own pops, my own father tried to slap me for saying this. So you know what, motherfuckers, and including my dad, <laughs> I am going to make a video about is Francis Ngannou the next Tyrone Woodley, and I will give a point-by-point -point breakdown. So uh, let's start off with the first, the origin of uh, why I feel like this. Uh, obviously, uh, I had this feeling... Even going through the Dana White uh, troubles, but look how both of these guys won the title, right? Tyron Woodley knocks out Robbie Lawler viciously. A beloved, I, I don't, I wouldn't say a beloved. Well, Robbie was beloved, but I wouldn't say Stipe is like Robbie. And that's the point I'm trying to make. But I will just say both guys knocked out a beloved champion. There are people like Ed that love Stipe and you know, anyone with a brain loves Robbie Lawler. He's one of the dopest dudes in the game. But, um, but yeah, you know, they both knocked him out, right? Now, obviously, Francis had, you know, two encounters with uh, Stipe Miocic, but knocked him out viciously in the rematch, right? That's all really people care about, you know? <laughs> and uh, both guys did it, right? Both guys have so much hype going into, you know, their first title defense, right? And uh, they're both known as knockout artists. But the only difference uh, in between, I guess, Tyron Woodley and Francis Ngannou, when Francis Ngannou started talking about the John Jones matchup, people cheered. Tyron Woodley, he talked about, after he beat Robbie Lawler, he talked about Nick and Nate Diaz. And everyone got mad because he, he felt like he was ducking um, Stephen Thompson, right? I remember that. And Stephen Thompson had said, even previously, said he'd rather fight Robbie Lawler than Tyron Woodley. And Tyron Woodley had said, oh, go fight Robbie Lawler now, right? And people got mad at him for saying that. But, um, but yeah, you know, both guys had that kind of similar situation where they knocked out a beloved champion and became uh, champion. But the difference is, uh, in this storyline, I would say right now, and in the comparison, is everyone still loves Francis. The weird thing was everyone hated on Tyron. Um, right and now tyron he kind of did it to himself but um right he had that great fight now the difference is he had a great fight with steven uh steven wonderboy thompson uh, for his first title defense it was a draw and but i thought it lived up to expectations and i, I thought that he, you know tyron wonderboy you know fucking kicked it out the park right so um that first time and uh, but with francis i know he had those knee injuries right and then he has that fight with Cyril Ghosn, and it just was uh it was a disaster it wasn't really the best fight that they could give um it just it was just one of those things that it wasn't as good as what everyone thought it was going to be um but you see that right you see the comparison right now then woodley fights wonder boy at 209 they were the main event they had khabib and tony as a co-main event that fell out but people were like oh they still got wonder boy and thompson All right not wonder wonder boy and fucking woodley my boy my bad but uh and you know i have a homie that actually watched that live in vegas and he told me it was one of the worst fucking fights he ever seen in his fucking life. Now, I didn't think it was that bad, but it is what it is. Wonder <laughs> Woodley, I keep saying Wonder Boy. Woodley got it done, and he did what he had to do. Um, same thing with Francis Ngano versus Cyril Ghan. And, and that's why I see the comparisons, you know. Uh, right now, uh, Francis, he, has the, he, he does have the excuse that he did have uh, an injury. But when you really think about it, Tyron Woodley was always entertaining when he got a finish. Um, he had one back-and-forth fight that went his way. And it went to a draw, really, you know? So it really didn't go his way, but he didn't lose, you know? Um, the other back-and-forth fight, he had two. Uh, the Nate Marquardt fight was back-and-forth. He lost that one. And Vicente Luque was back-and-forth, and he also lost that one. Um, Francis Ngannou really doesn't have a back-and-forth fight. Uh, and if he doesn't knock you out, it's going to be boring. Same thing with Tyron Woodley. So Francis had the excuse of the injury right let's talk more about this injury thing right the mcl all those tears what did tyron say after the damian maya fight you guys remember right yeah i think he had a, a torn labrum an injury both guys by the way i didn't even state this one or at least defended the title at 35 i think woodley won it at 34 so he's a little younger than francis but yeah and my second point right now obviously we can't compare all of Tyron's career to Francis because Francis hasn't got even to four title defenses like Woodley, right? 
But what Francis is, he's dealing with issues with the UFC, with promotion, with money, and overall treatment and respect. What was Tyron's biggest problems with Dana White? Now, he never made a contract issue, but what was his issues, right? Like, those are very similar issues that Tyron had with Dana. I, I, I see the writing on the wall. Like, you guys are all talking to me like I'm fucking retarded or whatever. And maybe I am. But still, I might be right about this. Okay? <laughs> I might really be right about this. I, I And also, Tyron wanted to box. People forget that. Before this Jake Paul nonsense, Tyron wanted to box Canelo. He said it. He said he's going to get his boxing license and he wants to box Canelo. He said that. He honestly, to like honest to God, he said that. Right? So, you know, you look at those situations and they're very, very similar. But um, now here's the difference Tyron never had an opportunity to leave the UFC. Uh, he left kind of like on his downslide. Now, Francis is leaving. Or could leave in this. I, I would say he's a heavyweight, so it's a little different. But Tyron, I mean, he, you could say he was past his prime by 35, but he kept that belt for a little bit. You know, he, he kept until I think like 38 or 37 uh, until he lost to Usman. And, uh, and that's the thing, like, you know, Tyron never had that opportunity to leave. He never did. He just, he honestly, to God, never did. Francis does. And uh, Francis, if he fights Tyson Fury, as much as I like Francis, and what I saw against Cyril Gunn, he would have gotten smoked. And same thing with, uh, with Woodley. You know, if he fought Canelo, he would have got smoked. Now, obviously, if those guys come to MMA, right, it's a lot different, right? You know, obviously, Francis would, you know, would do his thing against Fury. And, uh, and maybe, you know, T. Wood would take Canelo down. So, um, but that's the thing. In my humble opinion, these guys are very, very similar. And we saw what happened to Tyron. It did not end well. And when Tyron Woodley... Beat Darren Till. Do y'all remember this? And I'll, I'll put the clips down here. Did did Dana White show up to the post fight presser? No. What did Dana White do after Francis beat Cyril? He left. He didn't even put the belt around him. Now people are comparing this to Stipe when Stipe beat Fran. No, Fran Stipe. I give him his credit. He said, "Motherfucker, don't put that belt on me. You didn't believe in me." Dana chose not to put the belt on him. And uh, obviously, we, we all know, right, Markel Martin uh, is the one dealing with a lot of issues with Dana White. And I don't think Dana has a personal problem with Francis. I think he just has a personal problem with his management. And uh, and that's what's really going down. But um, I just see the similarities. And one thing that really hurt me about T. Wood's uh, title run is that it was so... There was a strategy to get him out of there, right? They So originally... It's fucked up, but originally Colby Covington was supposed to fight T Wood, and I think Colby would have beat T Wood back then. But um, he was the interim champion, and Darren Till got the the shot over Colby because you know Colby had some uh, nasal injuries and he couldn't make the fight. Right? Um, then RDA, Colby's former opponent, fights Kumar Usman on the Ultimate Fighter finale. Dana White was there ringside, right? He saw what Usman did to RDA. It was a more impressive performance over RDA than Colby. And he decided right then and there, this is the guy to beat Woodley. I don't know who is the guy actually to beat Francis. There is a part of me that is going by the T. Wood model. And I think Cyril Gan is the Wonder Boy at that time of the heavyweight division. If you remember, Wonder Boy was really good. He was really good until after he lost to fucking um, basically Darren Till and Liverpool. And people even, don't even think he lost that fight. People felt like he got robbed. I feel like I think it was a fair decision. But um, people felt like he got robbed. Don't forget, Wonder Boy was, was gatekeeping. You know, he beat Masvidal. Uh, uh, fucking, um, uh, where was it at? 217. Yeah, 217, New York, MSG. He beat Masvidal. And uh, he was the number two guy in the world. No one was touching him, right? So. I think Cyril is going to be in that position. I don't know if Cyril can ever become champion uh, if Francis is still there. And that's the issue. If Francis stays there, I don't know if he's ever going to become champion because I don't know if anybody's going to want to watch that fight again. And that's the same situation that Wonder Boy was in because he had a draw. And some people felt like he won that fight. Some people felt like he won the second fight, right? But it was very close. 
He, he never got a trilogy with Woodley because nobody ever wanted to see it. So I, I think Cyril might be in that same situation because that fight did not deliver. And the thing I'm scared about Francis is that he has to play this smart. You, if you want to, you have a meniscus tear, you have an MCL. Your contract ends in December. You're a heavyweight. You turn 36, you're not going to be trash, right? The hype will still be there for you and Tyson Fury. That's Tyson Fury. All Tyson Fury has to do is fight Dillian White. Dillian White's my guy. I like Dillian White. I really do. Man, I would be so happy to see Dillian White get uh, get the victory, but I don't think it's going to happen. Dillian White even has an MMA background, so it would be kind of dope to see Dillian White versus Francis Ngannou. But I, I do think Dillian probably loses to, to Tyson, and you wait. You heal up. You have it. You have an excuse, and they can't. Here's the thing with uh, these sometimes these fucked up contracts is that they'll give you a fight or like let's say you're you're over your um what's it called uh your fight you know your fighter contract and let's say you know you finished it he's the champion so he's kind of obligated to keep fighting because of bj Penn because bj Penn won the title and then he fucking left so they don't want that to ever happen again right so he's obligated if he accepts a fight and wins a fight he gets another title fight but if he waits and set and uses the injury excuse he can He'll be a free agent by next year, by December. So if he does that. Now, if he accepts a fight, his contract will keep going. Uh, and he will fight another fight. So he'll be stuck in a loop. But if he just waits it out, he'll be done. He'll be done with the UFC. And he can fight Tyson Fury and make a big bag. And I, I would love to see Francis get paid. I would love to see him get paid. I'm a Tyson Fury fan. Maybe it could it could be competitive. Dewey Cooper's a really good uh, boxing coach. If, if and Francis is tough, man, has a chin of fucking iron, man. If he could go the distance with Fury, that would be a great accomplishment for him, and uh, it would be an awesome fight. People would love to watch it. It'd be like Tyson versus Deontay all over again. It would be hype. So um, I would love to watch it, you know. But Francis, you are an MMA fighter, and you will not beat Tyson Fury. And that's just a fact, um, you know. And maybe you got to recover your relationship with Dana. If you want to stay there, there's there's just going to have to be that talk and just, uh, you know, the coming together kind of, you know, situation. And uh, enough of the back talking against each other. You know, like that was one thing I hated about T. Wood and Dana White is they always talk shit about each other behind each other's, well, not behind each other's backs, but it was talking mess about it. And it just wasn't nice. And Dana has to do this fucking job. T. Wood said it best. Do your fucking job. You're a promoter. Promote me. All right. I think it's time for Dana uh, and Francis to to get along, and uh, you know, and do, I don't want Francis and Ghana to be the next T Wood. I don't want a guy like Tom Aspin. Like I, you know, some people might call me crazy. I don't want Tom Aspinall being the next, like, to be the Kumar Usman, where they put Tom Aspinall in there to beat Francis and Ghana to take him out, right? And I don't want to see that happen to Francis, right? And, and now. Y'all, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't. <laughs> okay, UK fanboys, don't get too hyped, but I don't think that's going to happen. But still, my point is, I, I don't want them getting some guy to destroy Francis and destroy his whole entire ki- ki- career. Because you, you think Dana didn't laugh at T-Will when he got knocked out by Jake Paul? You think he was mad that his champion lost? No. That motherfucker don't like T-Wood. He probably enjoyed it. You don't think he enjoyed when Vicente Luque finished him or Colby Covington? Do you know what he... Uh, so go watch Thrill in Agony, right? After Usman beats him, he, he goes up to... You put a fucking all-time ass whooping on him, and he's just smirking like he enjoyed seeing T-Wood at his low. He, he wanted to see T-Wood uh, fall down, and I don't want to see that happen to Francis. But what I see is he's following T-Wood's footsteps, and T-Wood is the third greatest welterweight of all time. This is not a diss to compare someone to the third greatest welterweight of all time. He's on the Mount Rushmore, okay? Fuck that, all right? I don't want to, I'm not disrespecting Francis by, I know he got knocked out by some fucking, some punk, but still, it happened, he's fucking 40, it is what it is, but in his prime, that man, he killed Robbie Lawler, alright, so just show that guy some respect, but, um, but like I was saying, I just see Francis following those footsteps, and I don't want to see that happen to him, you know, I really don't, but uh, hopefully it doesn't, but I, I just, I see the writing on the wall, and uh, I, it just, it really was a shock. Now, obviously, I could be wrong. And maybe Francis, the only reason he fought like that was because of the knee injuries. But at the same time, it's like if he doesn't get the knockout, it's not going to be entertaining. But I, I felt like Francis didn't fight to his full potential. Uh, I saw him fight Stipe. I saw him bend his knees, right? So I think uh, this might be just really the knee injury. And I could be making a video for nothing. 
But in my humble opinion, Francis Ngannou might be the next Tyron Woodley uh, of the UFC in terms of just champion treatment and, and footsteps. You know, he's both guys, 35 when they started their title run, you know. So uh, Francis, luckily, he's a heavyweight. So it, it's a little different for them. You know, they can go past that, that prime, that supposed prime age. But, um, you know, their primes are a little different because, you know, just how they work. But, um, but yeah, uh, Francis might end up being like that. Uh, but, yeah, that's my video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Kind of just gave 15 minutes just talking shit. Uh, but yeah, you know, if you're new, obviously go follow me on my Instagram and my Twitter. Uh, like, comment, share the video. It's your boy eBay, and I'm out of here. Love y'all, and goodbye. And yeah. Since um, you've left the Octagon with the, your black belt and, and your title, have, have you spoken to Dana White? Oh, I haven't spoken to him yet. Did he already come in here? No. He left. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, nah, I hadn't talked to him. What would you say to him when you do see him? Because obviously he had, uh, I guess, a few words uh, about you yesterday in terms of, like, the, the fight this evening. You know, I just, um, I just focus on fighting and winning. You know, I, I did a great job. I had my phone taken away from me a couple of days earlier. Usually fight day I had my phone snatched, but I didn't have my phone, um, <clears throat> the last couple of days. So I didn't read any articles. But at the end of the day, you know, what speaks louder than going out there and being victorious? So, um, I, to be honest, Dana might say something this week. Next week, he might say something different. I don't know. So, I don't take offense to it. I just go out there and fight and win. And my goal is to be not Dana, to was that at your request? You didn't want Dana to do that? Or what, what, why, why did that happen? I don't know. You have to ask him. <laughs> so, so, you did not have anything that no, you didn't no, say, I, I don't do want to have anything to do about that. Okay. I think that was their decision. I'm about to ask about that, too. Okay. Um, <laughs> And I guess that leads, you know, Dana doesn't come to the press conference. It makes the inference that it's something to do with you, right? So, is um, does he it make you want to the press conference? He wasn't here. No, he wasn't. Ah, here. Okay. What? Well, I didn't know that too. Does it make you wonder what your future is in the company, given that? Well, it's been a long time that I've been uh, wondering about my future in the company. So, nothing has changed. I'm still in the same position. Front. One other question. What is the biggest issue from your standpoint? Is it simply money or is it the no, other way, the way no, you're no, treated? No, no, it's not simply money. I mean, uh, obviously, uh, money is a part of it, but it's also the term of the contract that uh, I don't agree with it. You know, I don't feel like uh, it's fair. I don't feel like I'm free. Uh, I'm a free man. I don't feel like, um, yeah, I don't feel like I'm, I've been treated good. And, uh, it's unfortunate that uh, I have to be in this position uh, to be able to do that, to say that. But I think it's something that everybody should at least have a right to claim uh, for what's best for him. You know, because at the end of the day, we put a lot of work in this job. We uh, uh, give, um, take a lot in our body to make it happen. So.